Ukraine is keeping up the momentum of counterattack in its war against Russia. It has persisted, saying that the demands have liberated one village after another and claiming that in one area, Ukraine has pushed the invaders back to the border. In some areas of the front, our soldiers have reached the country's border with the Russian Federation, said the governor of the northeastern region of Kharkiv, by Sini Hubov. The advance in Kherson province is Ukraine's largest in the south of the country since the war began and follows similar breakthroughs in the east that have turned the tide of the war in recent weeks. Russia's installed head of administration in the occupied parts of Ukraine's Kherson province confirmed that Ukrainian forces have captured a number of settlements along the river, pushing as far as around the village of Dutchany. This would represent a staggering advance after capturing 40 kilometers of territory in one day. The advance in the south also mirrors the Ukrainian advance in the east, where Ukrainian troops suddenly and quickly seized territory that is an important Russian supply route. Just hours after remarks in Moscow's Red Square last Friday, in which Russian President Vladimir Putin declared the province Donetsk, Luhansk, Kherson, and Zaporizhia became Russian territory, Ukraine recaptured Lyman, the main Russian stronghold in the north of Donetsk province. That paved the way for Ukrainian troops to push into Luhansk province. Putin has responded to Russia's failures on the battlefield over the past month by proclaiming annexation of occupied territory, calling up tens of thousands of people and reservists, and threatening nuclear retaliation. Today, Ukrainian forces carried out a sortie to expel the People's Militia of the Luhansk People's Republic, LPR, from trenches created along Highway T13-02 between the villages of Berestov and Verknakamyanka. This highway runs along the border between the regions Donetsk and Luhansk and lines of contact between Russian and Ukrainian troops. Ukrainian troops have taken control of Berestov, according to the Institute for the Study of War interactive map of the ongoing Russian invasion of Ukraine, which is only about 10 kilometers southwest of Lysikansk, one of Russia's major cities. Luhansk Oblast After a successful counteroffensive in Kharkiv, Ukrainian forces appear to be trying to advance in the Luhansk region. In late September, Ukrainian armed forces recaptured a village called Bylovorivka, which was occupied by Russian troops as recently as July after months of heavy fighting. Bylovorivka is also approximately 10 kilometers northwest of Lysikansk. This would suggest a multi-pronged assault by the Ukrainian forces from northwest and southwest directions on the Russian-occupied Luhansk region. Nevertheless, the latest footage of the battle along the T-13-02 highway suggests the Ukrainian military is far from realizing its aims. Even if it does, the Russian forces will have inflicted severe damage on the Ukrainian forces fighting them, similar to what happened in Kherson Oblast before the Russian troops withdrew from the Dnipro River's right west bank to the left eastern bank. Russian President Vladimir Putin gave a new signal about the war between Russia and Ukraine. He said that his military war with his fellow Soviet Union would take a long, long time. This occurred when the escalation of war between the two countries had not shown a significant reduction. In his statement, Wednesday local time, Putin explained that achieving all the goals for this war will take time. Putin also said it was useless to discuss additional mobilization steps because the more than 300,000 military reserves called up to fill the ranks were enough. At the same time, Putin insisted that the conflict actually started not just now, but since 2014. At that time, the West, he said, supported the nationalist coup in Kiev, referring to the Maidan Revolution. France and Germany then negotiated a ceasefire between Kiev and the Republic of Donbass in Minsk. However, the Kremlin feels the two European motors are doing nothing to keep and sell them.
The White House said Russia's latest attack on Ukraine was a reminder of Russian President Vladimir Putin's brutality. White House National Security Spokesman John Kirby also told reporters that oil price curbs would have no long-term impact on global oil prices, Reuters reports. This increased its military threat in Ukraine. The commander of the Ukrainian ground forces said better trained troops were arriving at the front. But Russia was using a lot of old equipment because it had no other way to replenish supplies. Russia was making only slow progress around Bakhmut, one of the zone's main fighting in eastern Ukraine, reports Reuters.